Et cetera. But again, if if we, America ends the special status of Hong Kong, what should the British government do in all this? Well, I, I think, it, first of all, it doesn't, I mean, I doubt that the Chinese are going to arrest everybody on the first day, right? I, don't, I think that's extremely unlikely. But well, the, I didn't say that, but, uh, but they no, no, would no, start... No, no, I realise that. Yeah, exerting I'm just saying, pressure I don't in their own way. I think that's exactly right. I think that what they'll do is they'll start exerting pressure in their own way. And when they open up their Ministry of State Security office in Hong Kong, which uh, will be a direct, uh, you know, a direct statement that, you know, like opening up a KGB office in in, uh, in London, if you like. I mean, it would be a direct statement that what you're trying to do is not cooperate, but control. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it would be uh, it would be a very threatening gesture. And for most people, I mean, all except the most courageous or some may say reckless, that would be the end of civil uh, civil rights in Hong Kong. That would be the end of freedom of speech. That would be the end of the democracy, uh, the democratic movement. And so, you know, you you don't have to arrest everybody for the for the for the impetus of control to be to be real. So I think that you know we've got to look at we've got to look at the reality for uh, Hong Kongers uh, who have been. Uh, but what about our reality? Country. What do we do? Is what does the British government do in response to this? Well, I think I think we've started uh, in one way well, which is to recognise that the status that we gave Hong Kong uh, nationals, uh, sorry, Hong Kong citizens in the nineteen um, eighties, which is to be a British national overseas, is now something that's really got to mean something. We've got to defend their rights, and if that means that they need the right to come to the United Kingdom, then then they should have that right. Uh, so I think that's the first thing. The second thing we need to do is actually. If we are going to make global Britain mean anything, and at the moment one can question what it, exactly it does mean, then we need to band together with others. And I have to say that the uh, the actions that we've seen in last week of uh, joint statements with the United States and Canada and Australia are great, but we need to go a lot further than that. You know, it must bring in countries like Japan, which are at the moment putting up aircraft at least twice a day to intercept uh, Chinese aggression, uh, and if we are going to look at um, if we're going to look at the way that the, uh, the 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 region is going to have to change, then we're going to have to support countries in sub-Saharan Africa, and of course, work with mm. India uh, in order to make sure that we are, you know, truly uh, defending the international rules-based system that has not just made us rich. Let's not forget, but actually has made China rich too.